Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1131. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, 1129 to 1132, click on the link below the video. Hey, this is four videos in a row. We're talking about aging of accounts receivable. We're going to do this one right here. We're going to use a pivot table. Ah, but we have to have a big caveat here. Pivot tables are not good for extracting records. The Excel table feature in 1129, array formulas, advanced filter, all of those are perfect for that. So this is kind of just a strange little side note just to show you. The problem is, since there's usually duplicates, Pivot tables are built to do aggregate calculations, not extract records. So if there's any duplicates, this will not work. But if you happen to have a situation where there aren't any duplicates, then this could work. Now, as in the last couple of videos, we have to add a helper column, days late, and we'll say equals later date minus earlier date, the due date minus the invoice date double click and send it down. We're also going to have to add a helper column for our category. So I'm going to come over here. These are the different categories for our aging reports. I'm going to create a text formula. I'm going to say for our label 1 and join it to in double quotes space greater than or equal to space days late space less than or equal to space and double quote and then join it to the upper control enter that will give us our in some sense this is a, not really a reporting category this is a method of expressing and criteria from algebra the variables in between days late and days late has to be greater than or equal to the lower and less than or equal to the upper all right now for lookup we're going to need the lower Control Enter, so I'm copying this down. We're actually going to only use these two columns for our lookup. So this is going to be Report Category, Enter, equals VLOOKUP, and I'm looking up days late, comma, within this little table right here, F4, comma. Second column has the thing we want to go get and bring back to this column, too. And this is approximate match, which is the default. Close parentheses, Control Enter double click and send it down. Approximate match just means when it finds a value like 46, it races through here. When it bumps into the first bigger one, it jumps back and it knows to get that category. If it gets a number bigger than the last one, it takes the last category. Now there's our pivot table data. We have two helper columns. Click in a single cell and I'm going to go to Insert Pivot Table or Alt-NV. Alt-NV is in 2013 only. In earlier versions, it was Alt-NVT. I'm just going to dump this on a new sheet, so I say Alt-NV, Enter. Now, what I'd like is customer name. Now, notice what does pivot table do? If you drop something in the row areas, it gives you a unique list. So if there were duplicates, as soon as we do something like days late, it would be adding. So you can look through here and see there's only one because we have a unique list. Now I want to get invoice amount and days late. Now I want to come over here. Again, notice it says sum. That's not um, what we're doing here. It's There's only one of each, so it's not really adding, but that's how we get it to show up. I'm going to right click value field settings, and I actually want to leave the sum of invoice amount out. If I try to enter this now, it won't let me because that's a field name. I'm going to trick it by putting a space at the end. And I want to do some number formatting. So I'm going to say something like currency. Click OK, click OK. Over here, another way to edit. Actually, I could double click to open it. But I'm actually going to hit F2, type a space, and then remove it. So you can actually uh, edit the field names right here. Days late, I don't need to do any number formatting. Now, I immediately want to come down here and name this sheet PT1 or something like that, or late. Now, here's the cool thing. Watch this. If we want our reporting category, and our goal is to put a new sheet for each reporting category, I'm going to drag this down to Filter. And then we can come up to Options. 
report show report filter pages and you are not going to believe this right now it says all up there but as soon as i click this and okay instantly it will create an individual report for each one of our reporting categories now i'm going to hit click escape i see that row labels is not the field name i want so i have to go up to design report layout show in tabular now i'm going to run from Analyze, Options, Show Report, Filter Pages. Now watch this, click OK, and then they're going to show up right here. And instantly I have one sheet for each reporting category. Boom, boom, boom. And it looks like I forgot to sort. Oh, look at that. I'm going to do a little trick here. That sheet back there is highlighted. Before I click on this one, I'm going to hold Shift, and then I'm going to right click delete. It's saying, what are you crazy? You want to delete all that hard work? Yes. Because I actually want to sort this. Right click, sort, largest to smallest. And now when I go to analyze, options, and click OK, instantly we get each one of our report and they're sorted. Again, this is kind of silly. This is the fourth video in a row we've done on aging reports. I don't think I would ever do it this way because there's just always a chance that we could have repeat customers. Remember, these are late invoices. So we could have more than a single invoice from each customer, and this method would not work. But that options show report filter pages is pretty awesome. All right, so back here we did 1128 all, to, all the way to 1131. A bunch of videos about Excel and aging of accounts receivable reports. All right, we'll see you next video.